wise men said, the best way to overcome gear fear in Tarkov is to know how to make a lot of money. And of course, when people think of money, they think of streets of Tarkov, lighthouse, maybe Shorelines Resort. But what if I told you that in this very last map, a new, completely broken area has been added that will turn you into the next Elon Musk of Tarkov? I decided to take a closer look, and after only one raid, I recognized the power of this discovery. A military complex with fixed machine guns and a firing range, conveniently located a step away from the resort and a car ready to take you out of there in less than a minute. I knew what I had to do. For the next 24 hours, I was going to empty every single shed, table or bag, until I was filthy rich. Going into my first raid, the plan was simple. Run in that direction without ever stopping, crossing the field and making my way through the various sheds. But I soon realized that it would not be that simple. Reaching the place, I started looking what I could find on the ground. And only two meters ahead, the first encounter of the story. It could be a scav. Numerous calves can spawn in this area, so I wasn't too worried. But still watching for every movement. Until... Nope, not a scav. Oh, oh my god. Fuck. Fuck. I hope there's nobody else. And so, I had just taken down a team of two PMCs that made it before me in the area. After the fight, I realized I had brought almost no healings into the raid. So I fixed what I can and rushed in to loot the first body. Caban. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. With my goal being to loot as much as possible, I went into the raid with a large backpack and two very spacious rigs that I could fill with whatever I find. Mmm, we need to take vitamins, vodka for now. Level 5 rig? I'll wear it. It's level 4 actually, not level 5. Okay, I really need to heal myself. And by the way guys, PS762, just awesome. They really hit hard. I'm gonna finish looting here and then I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go check uh, the other PMC. The goal is to collect whatever's on the ground and then replace low value items with better items found later into the raid. This will mean that I will never go out empty handed, helping me to generate profit. This is not worth anything. Capacitators. But there is not worth that much, but let's take it off for now. Ooh, and there's some sugar. I'll pick it up, thank you. Oh well. May I say I like him better than the other PMC? Look how much loot this one had found. The two PMCs had looted almost the entire area, limiting my work to a simple game of Tetris. As I organize the loot and continue with the next shed, I take this opportunity to remind you to leave like and subscribe to the channel. The first video in this style has been much loved and appreciated, giving me the charge and desire to continue in this direction. Thank you so much for the support. But now, back to us. The area consists of two sheds, a 10 foot of loot, a small shack, and a shooting range, where weapons, ammunition, and components can spawn. With a bit of luck, a large amount of loot can be secured, assuming you pay attention to the scabs. As I said, it spawned like crazy. Having retrieved the last few attachments, I realized that the car has already been taken. So I head towards path to shoreline and extract from the raid safely. 
bringing home the first treasure of this adventure. Now, most of the early raids were uneventful. You get in, run, loot, kill a scab, loot again, and get out. This gave me a chance to figure out how to optimize time using an SJ6 syringe to get into the area even with a far spawn, where the best loot would spawn, and most importantly, to confirm my theory that the area was completely broken and it was worth every second invested in looting it. But very soon, things take a very different turn. The area begins to be contested by many PMCs, making my life much more complicated. After several deaths, I decide to take a more careful approach, a thought that will pay off handsomely. It is morning, and after killing a couple of sniper scabs, I make my way to the military compound as usual, observing and scanning the surrounding area to not get caught off guard again. The closer I get, the more something seems to be out of place, until... I heard someone. Hmm. I don't know if it's scab or player, so... Player, player. From the way he moves, I can immediately tell that it is a PMC. I therefore decide to wait for the right moment to strike. There's two players, unfortunately. There's another one. The first PMC has an M1A, so I can assume they're both high level. Probably with a lot of game experience. Carrying only two mags with me, I need to play my cars the best I can to win this battle. I need to drill, otherwise I'm screwed. As we're stalling, I decide to take the initiative and look for a good shooting angle, entering the compound and waiting for him to make the next move. Heh. Fuck. Yes! Yes! Alright! Having eliminated the PMC, I check for the building to be clear, and that there's no third PMC hiding in a corner. With no one to be spotted, I finally have the green light to proceed. Okay. Thank you so much for this, I will use it. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm, does it make sense to do that? Dump one of these and get this. It's an armor rig. Look, let's do this. Oh, I'll take this right now. Yes, my friend. Yes. Hi, hi. In fact, we'll take this now. As I loot, a great wave of scabs approaches me. 
causing me to risk all the hard work that I've done. I therefore decided to speed up the process and immediately move towards the car that was already waiting for me with the engine on. <gasps> oh, yes! Look at this! Wow, with all the loot taken in this raid and the previous ones, the stash was starting to look pretty messy. So I decided to clear out a scav junk box and fill it up as much as possible, then sell it all together later. With that done, I joined Shoreline for another quick and clean raid, which had no particular mishaps outside of a player's cav at the extraction that made me break out in cold sweat. Okay. Okay, um... Don't ask me how I didn't die, because I dumped the whole magazine at him. Ah, oh, Nice! It's time for the first real sale. Keep in mind that some things had already been sold to make room after the first raids. All of this came later. Okay, whew! All empty. Let's see. Let's go! In less than 6 hours, I went from less than 200,000 rubles to a whopping 6.5 million. Things were getting interesting, but I still didn't know what Tarkov had in store for me. You see, this wipe also shifted the PMC spawns on shoreline, now placed all close together on either side of the map, making it easier to meet players just entering the raid. Getting to the military compound comes a very daunting challenge. I don't think he had a duo. I'm dead. I didn't go down, unfortunately. I hit him a few times. A few good hits. Damn, it's becoming impressive here with the spawns. Oh my god, are you kidding? Not seeing the PMC anymore, I tried to go around him with a flank, taking advantage of the fact that he needs healing. But just then, something unexpected was about to happen. Good night. Now there's another problem though. Uh, there's still the other guy around. After waiting for a few minutes, the other PMC seems to have disengaged. A perfect time to proceed looting. Oh, that's all for the best. Okay. Ooh, nice Reddit, dude. I almost think I'll take it. Throw this away and take the Reddit. Ah. Okay. Being already full, I decided to try extracting a path to shoreline right where the PMC that shot me is located. A risky decision that would however speed up the reset process. The 
problem is, will it be camped here? There's also the other PMC I killed, but honestly, it seems like they didn't really have anything good. Okay, he probably reset too. Another raid was secured, but my luck was unfortunately coming to an end. Raid after raid after raid. No! The deaths multiplied. 12 hours pass and the frustration grows more and more, reaching deep into my bones. 60% survival rate and with thermal. Socks! I checked half an hour on the fucking hill and there was nobody there! So much that I even forgot to start recording, forcing me to take this painful part directly from my Twitch livestream. No! Ragazzi, io non ci posso credere. Io vi giuro che non ci posso credere. Veramente. Madonna, ragazzi. As I have said many times, things don't always turn up the way we hope. But now, I want to show you one of the most profitable raids I have completed. A raid that shows the true potential of this area. Which is why some deaths should never stop you. I heard a scav, I think. Okay. Go for the loot! Great! I'm a little scared now to go up above these places, though. <laughs> oh, these are great. AP20s. Lupo's beans, very good. Ooh, Tetris, let's go. Oh, look at that nice Othalnoscope. Okay, that's a good one. All Kravasak is so good. Let's get it. is this? Wait, a death hill? What? What do you mean? GG. Oh, look at this. Woo. Holy damn, guys. 24 hours have passed. It's time to sell everything. Considering the countless deaths, always bringing in economic gear helped me not to go into a loss closing at the fantastic figure of 8.5 million rubles. In conclusion, I can say that I learned a great lesson. Perseverating often pays off, but obsessing only causes great stress. My advice is to try and loot the military complex only when you have a spawn in that part of the map, always carrying a variable sight to deal with enemies at any distance. And if you want to know how I took advantage of the distance to complete Tarkov's most toxic quest, click on this video and enjoy the story. See you soon.